Hello everybody, Squidish here. You guys know what's completely awesome in Dark Souls? Well, I'm gonna tell you. It's upgraded weapons. Upgraded weapons turn Dark Souls from a completely impossible battle against insurmountable odds to a fair fight. They even the playing field and give you the edge you need to get through this retardedly difficult game. Now, how are you gonna get all these upgraded weapons and gear? Well, you're gonna need Titanite. You're gonna need a lot of Titanite. And fortunate for you, I'm here to show you guys how to get all that Titanite. So follow me, we're gonna go on an adventure. And I'm gonna show you guys how to get the materials you need to get any top tier weapon your little heart desires. If you're after a specific type of Titanite, click on the icons here to skip to the portion of the video covering that variety of Titanite. Otherwise, sit back and open up your brains for a direct mainline of knowledge. Titanite shards, large titanite shards, and green titanite shards can all be farmed in the Blight Town Swamp. Now you're gonna need a lot of these guys because they do a lot of things. Your standard titanite shard is what you're gonna need to get any normal weapon or piece of armor up to the plus five level to ascend it into something useful. And large titanite shards will get it from plus five to plus ten, so you can ascend to the higher levels of gear. Once you've ascended, green titanite shards are gonna let you level up fire, magic, and divine weapons to plus five. And from there, you can move on with chunks to get your top tier weapons. But the point is, you're gonna need a lot of these lower ones to get anywhere. Now before you come down into sewer, I'd recommend you have two things. You're gonna want the rusted iron ring, that's for sure. You're gonna be running through a lot of this sludgy crap, and this run is gonna take a lot longer than it needs to if you don't bring the rusted iron ring. Granted, you're gonna have to keep switching it out for the covetous gold serpent. Unless you have another disposable ring you can get rid of. It's still worth bringing. I would also invest in some sort of area of effect abilities. Lightning miracles, like the spears, can cause shock waves in the swampy water and kill groups of slugs at once. Although any incredibly large weapon with a big swing radius will do. Wrath of Gods, however. Well, it, it's Wrath of Gods. It's really indisposable down here. No, seriously. Wrath of Gods. Once all the slugs are dead, go ahead and switch back over to the Rusted Iron Ring if you haven't already. You don't need the Gold Serpent anymore. It's not worth waiting around as you kill the slugs, waiting for loot to show up. It's better to just plow through all of them and then harvest your rewards on the way back. Down here, the Titanite has got a really high drop rate, and this is some of the easiest and most productive farming you're going to do. So enjoy it while you can, because it's going to get a lot slower and a lot more obnoxious. Don't even worry about the poison. The damage is completely negligible. It should be about worn off by the time you get to the bonfire anyway. It won't kill you. Now, I know there were no drops of green titanite shards in that run. That was all large, but there was just so much loot I had to put that one in. But I promise you, green titanite does drop, and not only does it drop, it drops in packs. They drop stacks of five green titanite shards at a time. Now, the slugs don't directly drop titanite shards. In order to acquire those, you're gonna have to ring both Bells of Awakening to get King Seeker Framped to show up in Firelink Shrine. Framped has a very unique and very useful ability, and that is the ability to break down Titanite into smaller pieces. So we're gonna use that to turn what the slugs give us into small Titanite shards. Now the reason that the slugs are the best way to do this is because they drop the stacks of five green Titanite. Here's how Titanite breaks down. A titanite slab, colorless or of any color, breaks down into a couple chunks of the same type. Breaking down a chunk that is colored gives you green titanite shards. A colorless tunk, chunk will give you large titanite shards. Breaking down either a large titanite shard or green titanite shard will give you standard titanite shards. Now the reason we're farming the slugs for standard titanite shards is the conversion rate from green 
to standard is 1 to 5. They drop a stack of 5 green Titanite shards, which Framped will turn into 25 standard Titanite shards. You will get those faster than you can possibly burn through them. Another option is to buy standard Titanite shards from Andre of Astora and the Undead Parish. He sells the Titanite shards for 800 souls apiece. Not a very high price, but since they're so easy to acquire, it's not necessarily worth it. The skeleton blacksmith in the catacombs also keeps on hand a stock of Titanite shards. So if you happen to be in the area and you need a couple to get an upgrade, stop by and grab some. He also does the service of providing homeward bones, which are incredibly useful for shard farming, as they allow you to warp back to the last bonfire you rested at. Not necessary here, but in some of the later farming routes, you're going to want to bring a stack of these at all times. Lastly, if you find yourself in the Anor Orlando area, obviously our large friend the giant blacksmith stocks up some Titanite shards as well. In addition, not only does he stock standard Titanite shards, he will also sell you large Titanite shards for 3,800 souls or green Titanite shards for 4,800. I don't think it's really worth it. That's a lot of souls and it's way easier to just farm the slugs. Titanite chunks and Titanite slabs are the top tier standard reinforcement materials. You're gonna need a chunk to get a weapon from plus 11 to plus 14, as well as to get a lightning weapon upgraded to plus 5, or 4. And then the slab is gonna knock you up to that plus 5, or finish off a weapon at plus 15. Now, don't come down here expecting to get a bajillion slabs, they're incredibly rare. As you just saw there, if you're planning on doing multiple runs, it's a good idea to just tap that elevator and send it back up to the top so you don't have to wait for it again coming back down. Don't waste your time with the transient curse. You can just run past all the goats. Goats? Well, the goats. The ghosts as well. If there are any goats, you can probably run past them. But we're just gonna drop down right here and go right to the Dark Wraith Slam. Be careful in this first room. It is incredibly easy to accidentally pull multiple Dark Wraiths at a time. They're not very strong, but they can still surprise you and knock you down pretty quick. Like I said, very easy to pull multiple Dark Wraiths at a time. Had this guy not engaged on his own, he would have been out the door ahead on our left, and I would have stopped by to get him before moving on. Don't expect to see results like this every run. I did each of these runs 10 to 15 times and posted the one that rewarded the most loot. This is in no way typical of how many chunks you're going to find. If you don't have a ranged ability, get this guy's attention then run back to the platform behind you. You don't want to fight him on this bridge, that's just asking for trouble. If you have difficulty in this room, there's no shame in using the Transient Curse. The two ghosts that show up to the party make this double Dark Wraith fight a lot more difficult than it needs to be. Like I said, feel free to just pop a Transient Curse and take them out if they're getting in your way. They're gonna fuck with you all the way up until you get through this guy. Like I said, Titanite Slabs do drop here, but they're retardedly rare. In 15 runs, I didn't even get one to show you guys. The drop rate is monumentally low, but they do drop. In addition, these Dark Wraiths can also drop the Dark Hand, a somewhat rare special shield that has the really nice ability of allowing you to steal humanity from friendly NPCs without turning them away from your cause. They won't get angry at you, they won't stop providing your service, but this will allow you to ravage their very souls for upwards of four or five humanity per person. Just think about how many people are sitting around Firelink Shrine by the end of the game. That's a lot of free humanity you can yoink. It's also a really sexy looking shield if you want to use it for that, but the humanity stealing's where it's at. Blue Titanite chunks and slabs are needed for magic and enchanted weapon reinforcement. 
Once you get past the initial plus 5 on a magic weapon, you're going to need chunks to get it up to plus 9 or plus 4 enchanted, and then a blue titanite slab to finish it off, just like all the other slabs. You're going to want to head to the Duke's archives and grab the biggest lightning weapon you have to take down these crystal golems. If you pack enough of a punch, they're stupid easy. You can stagger them with every single hit and even knock them out of jumping attacks. The only even slightly difficult fight here is this double golem pull, but if you have, again, any sort of ranged attack, especially a lightning one, it's trivial. Zwayhander, don't give a fuck. This hill right here is stupid, and I loathe whoever designed it. Fuck this hill. Fatty Lumpkins is... He's pretty fat. Look at him. Look at that fatty run. I feel like I had some silly trombone music while he's running across the field. It's worth bringing at least some sort of ranged attack, just so you don't have to fight all three of these golems at once. Again, not terribly difficult, but it is definitely somewhat of a pain in the ass. It's literally indescribable how weak the lightning these guys are. I highly recommend you invest in a lightning weapon to come farm these, even if it's unupgraded. Move pretty quick for some big guys sometimes. There is also one additional golem if you want to pop down a little ways into the crystal cave itself. But personally, I don't think at the time it takes to run down there and kill him is worth it. I think it's faster to just farm all the ones out in this field. Forest. Thing. If you want the blue titanite slabs, however, you are gonna have to go into the cave. And you're gonna have to fight these stupid fucking butterflies. Now these guys are gonna require a ranged attack. Grab the absolute largest whooping stick you have in your inventory. And get the biggest jumping hit you can on them to start the fight. You only get one. Once you smack them, they're gonna take off, and they are not gonna come like come back down like the moon. Yeah, I can't even talk. I hate these guys so much they actually rape my English knowledge. Point is, you're gonna need a ranged attack because once they're in the air, they are not coming back down ever for anything, ever. It is 100% a ranged fight once they get up, so make sure you've got enough firepower to put them back down. You can't even get a melee attack on this third one, so if you don't have powerful ranged abilities, I would just skip them and farm the first two. Once again, the drop rate is astronomically low, and in 15 runs, I didn't see a single blue titanite slap to show you guys, but they do drop. Red Titanite and Demon Titanite can both be farmed in Lost Isolith right before the Bed of Chaos fight. Red Titanite is used to upgrade fire and chaos weapons to right before their peak and like everything else a slab is used to top them off. Demon Titanite however is a bit fancy. Whenever you get a boss soul, you can upgrade a standard weapon to plus 10 and imbue it with the boss's power to get the boss's weapon. Those boss weapons are all upgraded with Demon Titanite exclusively. So if you're planning on using Ornstein's Spear or Quaylog's Fury Sword, you're gonna need to stock up on this stuff. Just running through the game will get you enough Demon Titanite to fully upgrade one boss weapon. If you want to do any more than that, this guy's got three, you're gonna be farming this Demon Titanite. These big flower pot spiky tentacle squid things are our main target here. They're the ones that'll drop the red titanite slabs. I have, in a change of pace, seen one of these drop before. Once. And it wasn't while I was recording for this video, and I don't think I have footage of it. This is once again in the stupidly rare pile, but 
like the butterflies, there's a very small number of them. So if you're hoping to farm some red titanite slabs, I hope you've got a lot of time to kill. I do this kill a bit differently. If you jump over to this root here and you have a ranged attack, you can kill this flower pot squid from the ground and then just see if he dropped anything. If not, you don't have to go through the trouble of getting up on that platform. Which, by the way, would be behind you once you drop down into this sludge. Proven fact, running in circles increases the drop rate of items. Oh, and you probably want the rest of the iron ring while you're down here. But you can take it off now. Arm yourself for combat. This next fight's the tough one. If you're just after Demon Titanite, you can skip that little sludge adventure and come straight here. This is where we're gonna get it. This guy's a son of a bitch, as you can probably tell by the fact that my previous life is laying there on the ground. That attack will kill you in one hit. I don't care how big you are. Do not underestimate this guy's range. If he starts pulling his arm back, he can and he will hit you. That is what got me killed before. This guy can also drop the Titanite Catch Pull. An absolutely terrible but kind of funny weapon. If you really want to farm a lot of red Titanite, you can go to Quaylog's sister, the daughter of Chaos, right past where you fought Quaylog. Join her covenant and offer, 30 hum offer her 30 humanity to open the door right in front of you. Through this door, there's another four or five of these little bug things, which by the way, kicking doesn't kill. And you can kill them as well to gain a little bit more chances at the red titanite chunks. Like you can see there, I just killed five and didn't see a single one though. Drop rate's kind of low, not really worth 30 humanity. White titanite chunks and slabs are used to upgrade divine and occult weapons. As per usual, chunks will bring it up to one below max and slabs will finish it off from there. Now we're going to be finding all this in the Tomb of the Giants. So you're going to want to bring some sort of light source with you unless you want to run blindly around in the dark. This is also probably the most difficult farming route, except for the Titanite Demon from the Red Chunks. But you can run past them if you're not actually after Demon Titanite. The enemies down here are pretty tough, including the fear-inducing skeleton dogs that every Dark Souls player knows and hates. Again, I'd recommend bringing some sort of piercing sorcery is the best way to do this, because you can get a couple double shots on those skeletal pillars. This route's really, really short, and allows you to farm a bunch of white titanite in a short time. If you want chunks, however, we're going to have to go from the second bonfire, and delve all the way up to Nito's door. Ignore all of these dogs. If any of them try to follow you, they'll just fall off a cliff and hand you some souls. Ready up in this tunnel. You got some combat ahead of you. First, we gotta clear out a couple more skeleton pillars. No problem, but that's some more chances at white titanite chunks. This is the pain here. If you got a piercing sorcery, it's not so bad. Just make sure you remember that one of them does come up behind you as well. Now you gotta take care of this Dark Corner McDougal. The Pinwheel Room is scary simply because of these guys' ridiculous ability to insta jib you. Be very careful and don't spend any more time than you have to on the bottom floor of this area. If you're gonna buff up, make sure you do it behind cover and don't get swarmed by the baby skeletons. If you need a load of White Titanite, you could definitely start at the first bonfire, farm those seven pillars, run to the second bonfire, and then farm all these pinwheels as well. That's a long farming route that gives you plenty of chances at white titanite chunks and slabs that'll break up the monotony of plowing through the same seven pillars over and over and over. 
And you only gotta kill two or three enemies in between the first and second bonfire. These pinwheels also have a chance to drop all three of the masks you can get from the pinwheel boss fight. So, more loot's always good. Don't try to homeward bone in this pool. Just get away from the stupid babies before you do anything. If you're not after any particular type of Titanite, the Black Knights leading up to the fight with Lord Gwyn drop every possible type of chunk in the game with a 100% drop rate. Every time you make a run through the kiln, not only are you getting shots at the Black Knight's shield and every Black Knight weapon, you will always walk away with one white Titanite chunk, one blue Titanite chunk, one red Titanite chunk, and two colorless Titanite chunks. The sword right there. I'm gonna be straight with you. If you're coming down here to farm Titanite and you're human, you're retarded. Don't do this human. Unless you just trying to justify an excuse to PvP, in which case by all means be human. But if you're seriously down here to farm Titanite, you should probably do this hollow. Be careful with this Black Knight, it is too easy to accidentally knock him off of the bridge and then lose the colorless chunky drops. This run's nice to just stock up on General Titanite, but if you're after a specific type to upgrade a weapon, it's going to be a lot faster to use the farming path for that specific type of Titanite. Unless it's red, in which case farming this is probably about as fast as doing the red Titanite farming route. However, that also gives you Demon Titanite and a chance at red slabs. So it, it, it's pretty much always worth it to do the standard farming outs. I forgot how stupid the two-handed Uchi R2 was. Twinkling Titanite's a weird beast. You need this to upgrade everything that's not considered standard. What does that mean? I don't know. From Software uses some sort of arbitrary definition to determine what is and is not standard. And this applies to both weapons and gear. Most weapons you find that come stock with some sort of damage other than physical are considered to be Twinkling Titanite weapons. And most gear you find that doesn't suck is also considered to be Twinkling Titanite. So, honestly, this route is mostly going to be farming for armor upgrades, rather than weapons. Unless you're a huge fan of Astora's Straight Sword, in which case, welcome to Twinkling Titanite Land. It's worth mentioning that while not a farmable location, the Great Hollow has 12 Crystal Lizards that will drop you gratuitous amounts of Twinkling Titanite, among other things. However, they do not respawn, so you can only plow through there and get all their bounty once. When you're coming to farm, this is where you're going to want to go. One of the lizards in the hollow will also drop a colorless slab. But again, only once. For these clams, any run-of-the-mill large stick will do. I prefer my lightning's way hand. The most important part of this farm is to make sure that you pull all of the clams at the same time for absolutely no reason. And then get your face smashed in by them. It actually increases the drop rate. Also, if you finish the fight with what is probably 1 HP, you'll earn their respect. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. These clams will also drop purging stones. Incredibly valuable items that will allow you to break curse. The most annoying thing in the entire game. As you can see, the drop rate is phenomenally high here. If you're lazy and don't feel like fighting through the crystal caverns every time you want to get down there, though, the giant blacksmith does sell a stock of Twinkling Titanite. However, they hope you're loaded because it's coming at eight grand per piece. 
considering you're probably going to need about 10 of these to fully upgrade one item, uh, like I said, hope you got some souls to blow.